let's be honest. D&D is about the loot. And Baldur's Gate has an amazing story, a lot of different quests to explore, but the risk versus rewards, right? Defeating that boss, closing out that quest line, getting that loot. And in this vlog, we're going to explore two interesting, potent, useful, but often overlooked magic items. And I've been pushing up to my Baldur's Gate playlist here on the channel, some different tactica exploring magic items because they're an important part of the game to manage and to help navigate both the party, but also your primary character. Now, while we're talking about magic items, I am aware of spoilers. So much of the game is self-discovery and unlocking this stuff for yourself. And I don't know where you are in the journey in this moment. So while we're talking about specific items, I am not naming where to acquire them, how to acquire them, locations or quests. That's for you to figure out. And if you've played Dungeons and Dragons before, some of these items will be familiar. If you're making your way through the game, something to think about. It's a reason to ask around and explore different quests and speak to the different NPCs in the various inns and locations through the game. So a ring of protection plus one. This is kind of a standard advanced Dungeons & Dragons item. You acquire them early on in the game. They're available later in the game. And across all the, diff the different classes... Lowering your armor class, right? To hit armor class zero, Thacko, lowering your armor class in any way is important. And the primary ways that you can lower your armor class in the game, of course, it's augmented by the type of character that you play, the character class. Uh, the first is a dexterity or armor class buff type bonus. Then building on this, the primary way is through armor, utilizing that. So obviously... A fighter fully decked up in full plate mail is going to have a lower overall armor class than some of the other classes that can't wear heavy armor or perhaps even armor at all. And then there are magical means. And a ring of protection is interesting because it is a magical way to decrease. This is where if you're used to D&D 5.0 or anything outside of AD&D, you're like, it's increased. No, to decrease your armor class. So these rings are not very expensive. They're very, very handy. But depending on the character class, they're the type of item that you acquire early on to give you a little bit of a boost to help you overall to kind of smooth out the dice rolls. But as you progress through the various chapters, you're going to quickly sell it, trade it, or move on to something better based on the rules of how things operate. So... In Advanced Dungeons & Dragons, this is important because Baldur's Gate is a AD and d rule set, magical armors interfere with magical armor class rings. So you can only bring down that number so much. So initially you'll have regular armor and maybe a ring of protection plus one, but then at some point as you switch over to a plus one, plus two, or named type armor, it's going to negate the ability of the ring. And uh, rings are kind of interesting in the game because it's, it's the slots they occupy. The we got to do a vlog on this, understanding slot management. Um, certain magic items in the game, there's a lot of weapons in the game. So you're going to be competing for slots. There's not that many rings in the game. So it's not like I've got four really great rings. You might want to keep that ring of protection plus one for a while because you're not competing for slots. So your choice, of course, is... As if you're putting a ring of protection plus one on a frontline fighter or uh, kind of a, a battle second line fighter class, and it could be a battle cleric too. I mean, clerics can fight and be offensive and buff and utilize arms and armor in the game. At that point early on when it's regular armor, it works. When you switch over to magical armor, another option is there are certain armor sets in the game. Suits of armor that are not magical, but through certain properties of the armor are equal or better than magical armor in the game. They tend to be rare, quest items, or quite expensive. These are unique because of how the slots interact. I can get that suit of very powerful non-magical armor, brings my armor class down tremendously as if it is magical armor, but I don't have the ring conflict, I then put the ring on. 
So that becomes a very, very interesting way. Now, there are other classes that normally are not going to have the armor conflict. Um, we see this with certain mage builds or non-armor wearing classes. And from this perspective, it's not a huge bump. They might not ever have a, a good armor class to begin with, but hey, this is AD&D. The dice mechanics, it's a combat-based game. That ring of protection is not going to save you any time, but it might save you some of the times. I mean, we're not going to just give up on armor class um, completely and totally. So often what you'll see is at certain points, obviously since you're keeping your mages or support characters in the back, you'll give that ring of protection plus one to your frontline crew. So this way you get their armor class down as best you can. But then as you augment and upgrade your gear, the ring of protections will switch to the back line. Of course, gear being gear and selling it and getting gold to buy more. Um, there are times, very viable times, depending on certain builds, where you're just going to trade it in for the gold and use that to offset the cost and acquisition of other items. But it's a handy early on piece of gear. Gives you that plus one bonus, that plus one adjustment, that plus one bump, and um, enough are available through quests, purchasing, finding, discovering, obtaining that you can spread them out in the game. 